here and this. Another man got saved watching online. And then we heard about the lady in Old Fort who was walking past a church parking lot service this morning, heard the preaching and went over and got saved up there in Old Fort this morning. <laughs> so praise God. Amen. The Lord can take something bad and make something good come out of it. Let's turn your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 19 for just a few minutes this evening. And uh, we'll, not, we'll not be long tonight at all. I want to just give you an encouraging word here this evening uh, about uh, trusting the Lord. Look at 1 Kings chapter 19, and we'll read the story, one of the stories of Elijah the prophet, the great Old Testament prophet, and bring you the message from it. Here in 1 Kings chapter 19, Isaiah was majorly discouraged. He was about as down as far as a man could get down. As a matter of fact, he got so far down that he wished he would die. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but has anybody in here thought, I, I just wish I'd die. Just, just kill me, Lord. We've all, I felt like that before. And if you live long enough, you probably will too. And you think, man, I'd soon be better off dead. And that's the way he got. And you can get like that. Life can, life can deal you a bad hand sometimes, and you can get to where you don't even want to live. And ain't you glad God don't always hear them stupid prayers like that? What well, if he said every time you say, I don't want to live, Lord, bam, zap you out like that. I'm glad he don't. Well, let's hear what he said here to uh, Elijah in 1 Kings 19. And Ahab, that's the king, told Jezebel, his wife, wonder how come you don't never meet no little girls named Jezebel? They name them Mary and, and Sarah. I know some that should be named Jezebel. <laughs> we'll, not, we'll, get up, we'll not get up there right now. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And withal, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, this is the false gods, a little g, do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now, hold your finger there just a second. She was the highest political figure in the country. The king's wife, Hill, uh, uh, Jezebel. And she said, I'll make sure you're dead by tomorrow, dude. You're, you're, uh, you're done. Uh, this time tomorrow, you're dead. And it scared him. He got afraid. And look at verse number 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Look at that. He requested. Hold your finger there just a second. He requested. Anybody got a prayer request? Elijah said, I do. Uh, what's that, Elijah? Let's all pray that I die. That was his prayer request. He requested in himself. That's bad, ain't it? That's bad. What a prayer request. That, and he said, let me die, Lord. It is enough. I've had it. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept, you know why that's in there? One of the sure signs of depression is you want to sleep all the time. People want to sleep all the time, close the curtains in the middle of the day, shut out the light. That's what depression and stuff does to you. Best thing you do is make yourself get out of that bed and go out and stare at the sun <laughs> for a little while. Amen. I mean, Lord have mercy, get, get yourself alive, people. Amen. Uh, uh, the, the sunshine good for you, vitamin D. And he said, uh, he slept under a juniper tree, and behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, and there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. He went, that didn't do it. He laid back down and went to sleep again, got up and ate and went right back to bed. That's the way to ruin your life if you've ever seen one right there. Lay in the bed all the time. We, 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 we went to people's house yesterday. Hold your finger. Knocked on the door. Kids come to the door. Hey, 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 hey. Mama, the church people's here. And it, about, about three minutes later, 
door open like this, and here she comes. 12 o'clock in the day, 12 o'clock in the day, in the daytime, unless you're dying, you ain't got no business being in bed at 12 o'clock there. You work third shift or something. Lord, when I worked the third shift, I couldn't sleep on pretty days when I'd stayed up all night. Uh, when, I, when it's pretty outside, get up. Get up, Elijah, what's wrong with you? And the angel touched him, baked him angel food cake and handed it to him. You'd think he'd get shouting happy and he laid back down and go to sleep again. Look at him. And verse number 7, and the angel of the Lord came again. Had to fix him some strawberry cheesecake. Hint, hint. I've been a little depressed lately. And, and the angel looked and said, and touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that mate 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. I want to preach just really short few minutes tonight on strength for your weakest hour. When you really get down and you really need God's help. One of the things, one of the most wonderful things I've ever learned as a Christian is that when you really get down and you're at the bottom and you ain't got nowhere else to go, the Lord will be there. When you really got to have him, he'll show up somehow or another. Well, I just want to point out a few things about this. And the first thing I want to say is Elijah was a man of prayer. Elijah was a man of prayer. He wasn't a backslid, carnal, hit and miss church member that come half time and stayed out in the world. He was a great man. As a matter of fact, the chapter before this, he had just seen the power of God come down and do a great miracle there, and fire down from heaven. Ain't many people seen that. There ain't many people been so right with God they could pray 18 words and fire would fall out of heaven and lick up water out of a ditch like that. He had seen the destruction of 450 false prophets of Baal. All right, all right, all right done with you, man. Bam. And the Lord fought, fire falls down. Come on, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So he wasn't just some old half in, half out, backslid uh, church member didn't even know if he's saved or not. Elijah was a man a prayer. I said that to say this. It don't. Uh, sometimes, sometimes people that can go real high can also go real low. Sometimes people that are re really spiritual can sometimes get really wicked. You see that over and over and over. In about sometimes people that the Lord can really use, the devil can really use. Sometimes people that uh, the Lord really gifts and help, the devil can give and help. So Elijah was a man of prayer. Number two. Looking at Israel's spiritual weakness, Elijah became weak. He looked around at the weakness of Israel and became weak. He said, the most, uh, he said it's disheartening. The most disheartening, discouraging thing to a Christian is to look around and see people quitting right and left. You talk about knocking the spiritual wind out of you. I've been to a lot of places and preached from here to... California and about everywhere in between and a lot of times I've had preachers pick me up at the airport and, uh, and, and, and on the way to the motel or wherever they're going to take me they'll say brother Danny they said uh, I'm so glad that you're here that I'm so discouraged they said half my church has quit I had an associate pastor and he just took half my church and went down the road and started another church and he said uh, we didn't hardly have but a handful no way and he said I don't know how we're going to pay the bills and I don't know how we're going to make it and I don't know how we're going to make it we just don't have the money coming in and my wife's discouraged and she's got her feelings hurt and all the other ladies are talking about her and, and, uh, and, and you know when you start looking around at the spiritual condition of a lot of people, it's easy to get down and discouraged. And that's what Elijah did. He got his eyes on people. Instead of getting his eyes upon the Lord, he saw Israel, and Israel had broken their vows. Israel had forsaken the Lord. Israel had built altars to false God. And Elijah looked at that and said, "My, we're done. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we're sinking. It's, we're going down. This over. And you can't do that. You can't get your eyes on what's going on around you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say to you tonight, if all you did 
is watch the news and what they say on the weather and what they say on the news and everything's bad and we're never going to make it through this and nothing going to happen. Well, Lord, you'd be ready to kill yourself. But I'm so glad and thankful that we got that we can look up that way. Don't look around this way. Look up that way. Look in under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Elijah, he looked at Israel's spiritual condition. He said, man, I ain't worth living. And then number three, he heard the threat of Jezebel. The threat of Jezebel. Fear leads to depression. Depression leads to discouragement. Discouragement leads to a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, uh, uh, Jezebel got on the news that night, and she was on there, and they said, uh, what do you have to say? And she got the microphone, and she said, I know you're out there, preacher, and we're coming after you. Do you hear me? We're coming after you. Elijah and somebody, uh, Eli, they said, Elijah, you better get turn on the news. And instead of reading his Bible and praying, he turned on the news. Big mistake. I know some people that all they do, that's why this, this coronavirus stuff, you got people scared to death come out of the house. They're scared. There's a lot of people afraid, afraid. And I don't, I'm not being, I don't think you should be reckless. Uh, you should respect this thing and not fool around and not be, not be taking foolish chances and stuff. But we're not supposed to live in fear as Christians. We're not supposed to live in fear. If, you, if all you do is watch the news, you, you'll be crazy. Uh, you'll be wanting to take pills to make yourself feel better. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jezebel got on there and said, We're going to get you, Elijah. We're going to get you. I mean, you know, 300 people can go in Psalms at the same time, but only 10 can come and hear you preach, Elijah. And we'll look, we'll watch you for us on them. That's what she was doing. She was after him. She was after him. She was after him. And Elijah got down. He said, God, how am I going to make it? God, how am I going to make it? God, I don't know. He kept hearing bad news, bad news, threats, and more threats, and more threats, and more threats. And she was on the news, and they were saying, we're going to get you, Elijah. And, brother, he got depressed and got down. Went out and laid down under a tree. He said, just kill me. I'll just die. Nobody going to hit me no way. Done lost everything. And I think the Lord said, uh, didn't you just see fire come down out of heaven? Thought, yeah, but that was probably just a coincidence. Probably wasn't even really you, God. I just got by. Now, you see what they're saying? She's going to kill me. She's going to have me killed. O.J. Frank Norris said, the two biggest enemies that a real preacher has is jealous preachers and big shot women. Big shot women in that order. And he said, uh, he said, I'm scared. Look at Elijah's conclusion. Everyone is backslid. I'm the only one serving you. Jezebel is going to kill me. Let me die. And you know what he thought? He thought I'm the only person. Now, now, now listen to me. Listen to me. Don't ever get to the place where you think you're the only one trying to do right. Because you're not. You're not. God's always got a bunch of people out there somewhere that's serving Him. I promise you tonight, we may not know them. We may live in the far countries of Africa, in the deep down in the jungles of South Brazil, in the far up, up in Alaska. God's got people everywhere that are serving Him, living right. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. God's got millions of people serving Him. He said, Elijah, you ain't the only one. You just quit feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, he said, I'm the only one serving God. Nobody else is living right. And number five, Elijah hears from God. So, he's down there in the tree like this, wrote out a wheel or whatever, suicide note or something. And he wrote down there and said, I've had it. I'm done. Give my Bible to my oldest daughter. Uh, give my uh, give my shotgun to my middle daughter. Uh, uh, give my uh, bicycle or my motorcycle or whatever. So I, give this, give that. And he said, I'm just going to lay down and die. So he lays down like this. And the Lord said, uh, one of you angels come here just a second. I got a job for you. Yes, sir. What you need me to do, Lord? Go down there and 
tell that preacher to quit feeling sorry for himself and shut up. No, the Lord didn't do that. Sometimes God, it's a wonder the Lord don't knock our heads off, you know it. It really is. Uh, but he ain't he merciful to us. Ain't he good to us. Right? There's been a lot of times when I needed my head knocked off, and instead God blessed me. Explain that, buddy. That's mercy. That's goodness of God. And the angel comes down and said, uh, Hey, preacher, would you come up? I don't see no camel. UFO, something dropped you off here. How'd you get here? And the angel said, Never mind that. Are you hungry? He said, Well, yeah, I am, to tell you the truth. He fixed him some cornbread. And he said, Come up and eat that. And he put some, put some uh, if you back then, he had uh, cornbread and buttermilk. I, that's what daddy ate. I never ate cornbread and buttermilk. I eat cornbread and bread and regular milk. I, I don't say anybody could eat buttermilk. It looks like somebody's already eaten one time, y'all. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, it, uh, but I, I have cornbread and regular meal. And, and but anyway, uh, Daddy'd eat cornbread. And he fixed cornbread, buttermilk, and he, and he said, "Now you feel better, preacher. Let's go preach." He said, "I'm just gonna lay down and die." He said, "Now wait a minute." Touched him again, picked him up. Elijah heard from God. Listen, when you get so far down that you think. You have to look up to see the bottom. I've been there. Been there more than once. I've been down so far and I thought, and the devil, you know once the devil gets you down, that's when he jumps on you like that. You know, the devil, it's like a boxing match. You know them boxers? You know, they, they box like him, bam, bam, bam. And if they land a couple of good punches and the man goes, they go in for the kill, buddy. Get him down, beat his head, beat him to death, kill him. Why you got him down? If the devil ever gets you down, if he can get in your marriage, if he can get you to lose your job, if he can give you some kind of disease or something like that, he'll get you down and beat you to death. He'll get you down where, and right then, right then when you think you've lost it all, right then when you think nothing good can ever happen again, right then when you think it's over, the Lord will send some help from on high somewhere. Somebody will knock on the door. Somebody will give you a phone call. Call. I was going through a hard time one time, and um, uh, uh, I had a knock on the door. I felt just like Elijah. I would just lay down and die. And all of a sudden, I heard somebody knock on the back door, and it was, a, it was an old boy from the church. And uh, sorry about that, camera woman's telling me to move. Uh, uh, it was an old boy from the church, and he said, uh, he said, I brought you something, Brother Danny. And he come in with a big old thing of country ham about that big. And I used to love country ham. I don't, I ain't, I still like it, but I ain't crazy over it like I used to be. We used to go to a place down here in Hickory. Some of you old people might remember it was called Mom and Pop's Ham House. And it used to be down there in Hickory, and you could go in there and get all you could eat. They'd just keep bringing it to you. And I'm telling you, brother, you talk about salty. Lord, have mercy. I'd, you eat, tell you, I'd be up three or four times a night drinking just glasses of water. It tastes like pure salt. Man, it's good. And we eat that cream-style corn and them rolls and all that. Well, here he come in the back door with a country ham. And I said, I don't want nothing. He said, you're going to eat? We're going to have a time. I said, no, I ain't hungry. I want to die. I, I just want to die. I've laid down under my juniper tree and I'm going to die. He said, no. He went in the kitchen and got out some pots and pans and started frying that, that country ham on the stove. Now, normally, that will make your tongue slap your brains out. Uh, you know, and when you smell that ham cooking in there, you ever got up in the morning, buddy? I mean, and, and they'll do it every time. She'll do it every time, especially when I'm fasting. I, I'll be upstairs, and I'll smell bacon coming up through the cracks of that. And it comes up through there and goes right up in my nose. And I say, ugh. Uh, I got, and uh, man, ain't nothing smells better than bacon and biscuits early in the morning. Lord have mercy. And uh, you know what? I ate that and I felt better. And it's like an angel of the Lord sent that old boy there with that ham. And I'm telling you, I don't care what you're going through tonight. All you people watching me on YouTube tonight and at home, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Right when you get to where you think there's no hope, the Lord will send you just a little bit of help from somewhere. He sent the angel and fixed him some food. Elijah heard from God. I like that song, the inspiration. The primitive quartet used to sing that. I just heard from heaven, and everything is all right now. You see, the Hebrew children didn't see the fourth man till they were in the fire. When they got ready to throw him in that fire, they didn't say, Boy, it sure is good to see you, Jesus. Are you going in here with us? They didn't even know he was going to be in there. 
But when they got in the fire, there he was. Sometimes the Lord don't just fix everything right when you, you want him to or when it first happens. But when you got to have him, when you got to have him, thank God he'll be there, people. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. He'll be there. Daniel did not see the angel shut the lion's mouth till he was in the lion's den. Amen. Well, he'll be there right on time. Number six, God was not ready for Elijah to die. God was not ready for Elijah. That's very important. I, I, he said, Elijah, I'm not done with you. As a matter of fact, on down further in the chapter, he said, I want you to anoint Haziel to be king of Syria and Jehu to be king of Israel. He said, Elijah, you've got to do two ordination services. You've got more stuff to do. You've got more sermons to preach. I ain't done with you, boy. Now get up and let's get going here. And buddy Elijah ate that second cake, and he went 40 days in the strength of that. Uh, think about that. That was a meal there, buddy. That was a meal. I mean, that had, uh, that had uh, monster drink and five-hour energy and everything else. <laughs> I mean, man, ate that food and ate 40 days. I mean, brrr, 90 miles an hour for 40 days. Well, I'd like to have some of that, wouldn't you? Amen. I'm telling you what, brother, he, he put the proteins on. I mean, he growed muscles and, 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 and Roy sandals out and, and had everything running across the country preaching. God wasn't done with him yet. And let, and let me say something to you tonight. God's not done with you or you wouldn't still be here. Don't you ever think, all you people watching, don't ever think, I'm just useless. There's no reason. I don't, I'm no good to nobody. I'm no help to nobody. I'm just in the way. Nobody cares. Listen, if God didn't have something for you to do, he would have done took you out. He said, Elijah, I've got work for you to do. And he did have. And God's got something for you to do and me to do. Or he would have done took us home. And listen, when he gets done with us, you don't want to stay no longer. If the Lord's done with you, you're ready to go. So God wasn't done. And then lastly, Elijah arose, ate, and was strengthened. He went in the strength of that meat 40 days. He ate the bread that came from heaven. He drank the cruise of water, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Listen, people, we're living in some scary, scary times. We're living in some scary times. We don't know from one day to the next. But we're not out of this mess yet. No, we're near it. It is now, a virus is bad enough, but now it's become a political issue. And everybody's using it just to fight political enemies. They're saying it's their fault. They're saying it's their fault. We're, we're fixing to see the awfulest mess we've ever seen in our life here in the next few months. It's, you talk about a mess, we're fixing to have one. And the only thing I can tell you is keep your eyes on the one that knows it all. Keep your eyes on the one that's going to fix it all one of these days. Keep your eyes on the one that's got a better place to go than down here. We've got a better place to go when we leave here. Keep your, keep your head right. Keep your heart right. Eat. Eat, eat this right here. Eat the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, and surely not by TV and Internet and, and YouTube videos and, and text. and faith. Listen, put your face in this book and eat it, and you'll go in the strength of that book till this hard time's over. I have, uh, as I said this morning, I was supposed to be preaching in South Carolina this past weekend, and I was supposed to be in West Virginia last week. And supposed to have been in uh, down in Randleman a few weeks before that, and then uh, not this coming week, but the next one I'm supposed to preach at Chris's. And because of that, I've had a little more time, not having a youth rally, to just sit and read my Bible. Not just to get my chapters read, not just to get ready to preach, just to, just to eat it and feed my soul. And it has absolutely been wonderful. This week, I've been reading the book of Revelation this week. Got two more chapters. I'll finish tomorrow morning, Lord willing. And I've never had the book of Revelation seem like it opened to me like it has just this week. You know what? I can go in the strength of that. I can go in the strength of what I get out of that book every day in your life. Don't get in a hurry. Don't rush yourself. 
Do it early in the morning when your mind's clear. Open up that book and just say, Lord, speak to me through your word. Son, a little angel will give you a cake out of there that will keep you going all week long. That's strength for your weakest hour. I don't know who in here tonight or who's watching that might say, you know what, preacher? I'm sort of scared. I'm worried about all this stuff that's going on. Is God trying to tell us something? Well, there's no doubt about that. He is. And if you're listening tonight, maybe this might be God's way of speaking to you. Why don't you let him? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Everybody bow your head, please. I just want to bring this little short message tonight on the subject strength for your weakest hour. Now, while your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to ask you a question. Do you know, do you know for sure that you've been saved? She's playing softly. God's speaking to your heart. You say, Brother Danny, I don't know. Well, you better find out. You better figure it out before you leave here tonight. Because the Lord may be coming really soon. He may be coming really soon, a lot sooner than we think. Or you could die. You don't ever know when your last day is. People are dying by the thousands. Would you let them speak to your heart tonight? Right now, while your head's bowed and eyes are closed, people online watching, as I said this morning, why don't you call upon the name of the Lord? You say, how do you get saved, preacher? The Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Will you do that tonight? Will you do that tonight? Right now, right now. Say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. And I believe that you died for my sin. And right now, right now, I trust Jesus Christ and Him only as my only hope for heaven. You say, preacher, I don't know how to trust Him. Well, you say, there's no other way I can get there. There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can say. If He don't get me there, I can't go. I'm trusting Him. That's how. Trust Him. Trust Him. That's how I'm going. And that's how you can go. Please do that tonight. Father, I pray right now you'd help that one of those who may be watching Maybe in some other country somewhere, I don't know. England or Africa or Australia or Canada or wherever they may be watching from tonight. Some in Romania and other places. I pray you'd speak to that heart. Speak to that heart tonight, I pray. And I'll thank you and love you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Okay, now, before we go...